I apologise in advance if this film makes you feel more than a little unclean. If you're not into spiders, lice and bacteria, this one isn't for you, I'm afraid. Well, actually, this one is for you because in a rather gross way, you are practically a walking petri dish, a home for more bugs and bacteria than you'd care to know about. In fact, you are technically more microbe than human. First, I want to freak you out by filling you in on some of the bugs that call you home. Let's start with your face. Well, more specifically, on your face and the spiders that live there. Yep. Spiders. Well, spider cousins. Demodex spiders. They crawl across your face to mate at night. Then they retreat into your pores to lay their eggs and die. Lovely. This may seem a terrifying idea, but we actually need these little guys to sweep up all the waste on our skin. They're totally harmless and their spring cleaning means fewer harmful bacteria can get in, such as Propobacterium acnes and Staphylococcus. Demodex live headfirst in your hair follicles where they prevent other more risky infections developing. Oh, and there's no point getting stressed about this guys, partly because stress produces cortisol and the cortisol in your face oil just gives them better food. Also, it's totally normal and healthy for everyone to have at least one or two mites per square centimetre of face. Okay, spiders on the face? Check. What else are you playing host to? Well, it's time to take a closer look at your hair, where well, you may find some human lice, the jumping cousins of the fleas. They're specialised into three groups which colonise our head, body and pubic regions. And the relationship to each other gives us particular clues to human history. The body louse can only survive in clothes and its genetic differences from the head louse give clues about when humans started wearing clothes between 40,000 and 70,000 years ago. Rather disturbingly, the human pubic louse is more related to the gorilla louse than to other human lice. This means, have you worked it out yet, that our ancestors were somehow interacting with gorillas over three million years ago. Yeah, that could be sexually or by using their sleep sites or even cannibalizing them. So let's delve into the body for the next item on the gross list of human stowaways. We don't only have things living on us, there's a fair few parasites in us as well. In fact, there are actually 10 times more bacterial cells in your body than human cells. That's not a bad thing though, we actually rely on bacteria to keep our bodies doing all the jobs we need to stay alive, like creating energy from food. We need lots of different individual atoms like magnesium and zinc, as well as slightly bigger compounds like B vitamins to get all the complicated jobs done. Our stomach muscles and the acids in our gut need to break our food down into small chunks and to separate out those atoms, vitamins and minerals, we need something tiny to do it for us. We need intestinal bacteria. Oh, and it's actually that bacteria that produces the gas in your intestine, not you. So if you have to blame someone, blame the bacteria. Our relationships with these microscopic mates goes back a long time. Our immune system grew up with these guys in evolutionary terms, so it recognises that they're useful and fairly trustworthy. But it's still primed to stop them when they're in areas where they shouldn't be, or if there are way too many of them. Our DNA actually contains viral parasites. In fact, according to the Human Genome Project, around 50% of our DNA is parasite DNA, accumulated over thousands of years. But again, don't worry, it's almost all harmless. Amazingly, scientists actually think that more than being covered in bugs and having them inside us all, we actually descended from parasites. That we ourselves, our entire bodies, sprang up from an initial collaboration between tiny parasitic organisms. Millions of years ago, a primitive bacteria, a mitochondria, paired up with what was essentially just a cell wall. The pairing was a great success. It allowed the mitochondria to keep harmful stuff away and good stuff close, and between them they could divide labour, focus on one thing each and be more comfortable and successful. That mitochondria is now in almost every cell of your body. It's the power plant creating the energy that you need to survive. So not only are we home to more bugs than we care to think of, we owe our existence to them. After that first meeting millions of years ago, we've been inseparable. The rest, as the saying goes, was history. Well, natural history, or evolution, as I like to call it. I'm a big knuckle cracker, but apparently people also pop or crack their hips, jaws, ankles and 
Achilles tendon?